I was on my Rihanna. <laughs> Rihanna ain't dropped an album in seven years. I was gone for seven months, but now I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And as you all know, the focus and the premise of this show is ultimately to be a resource to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And we focus on stories, strategies, and successes ultimately to help them accomplish just that. And I think we have the ideal guest in the building today to help uh, not just student athletes, but all athletes alike, and even those corporate athletes just floating out there. So the first thing I'm going to encourage you all to do before we get to our guest is I'm going to encourage you to make sure you subscribe on YouTube. That way you get exclusive content and you never miss an episode. But without further ado, I want to go ahead and welcome, since we have a very special guest in the studio, uh, we're going to go ahead and welcome out um, the director of marketing at Will Ventures. She's also She also uh, was included in the front office sports rising 25 in addition to sports business journal 30 under 30 without further ado let me welcome miss kirby porter to beyond the ball how you doing kirby hello i'm good thank you for having me excellent excellent glad we finally you know we made that we made the stars align on this yes. one <laughs> yeah overdue overdue excited to be here though Definitely, definitely glad, glad to have you. Glad to have you. But Kirby, go ahead, take take a second and and just let let people know a little bit more about you. Just take take a little bit of time and give like a snippet on yourself, just in case if this is the first introduction that that people are are having to you at this time. Yeah, if this is the first time you're meeting me, I often begin my career journey with my experience as a student athlete because I think so much of it has informed my passions, uh, the people I want to help and inspire and impact and the strategies that I kind of implement on a yearly to daily basis to reach those goals. I uh, played basketball at Harvard, loved my four years there. It's where I found my passion for sports and uh, kind of got that first light bulb that like, wow, I don't have to be in a basketball jersey to stay close to this passion, to this you know piece of me that has kind of guided me um, you know, so far in my journey. I interned at the Patriots after my freshman year. I interned at Under Armour after my sophomore year. And both of those experiences were in marketing. And it also um, you know, signaled to me that I had another passion for the, the skill set of marketing. Uh, I always tell student athletes, I think it's important to kind of find that craft um, almost like, you know, basketball was my craft for so long. Now in my career, in some ways, it's kind of fun to view marketing and strategy as that, um, you know, parallel. But um, that led me to begin my career at PepsiCo in New York. Um, I was there for a couple of years. I worked on brands like Mountain Dew. I worked in our sports marketing team and um, helped uh, manage our NBA partnership. But throughout those two years, uh, when I first got to the other side of the game, I uh, kind of encountered that now what moment that a lot of athletes feel when they step on the other side, they're beginning their next chapter. And um, for me, it began with a lot of self-reflection. I remember asking myself, what's my narrative now, right? Like it wasn't that basketball defined me, but as I thought about my you know, trajectory, the things that I aspired to do, the people that I wanted to impact, a lot of the basketball had provided that type of guidance for me. Um, and I kind of went through this journey of thinking about how can I leverage um, not just the skill sets from basketball that gave me teamwork and leadership and resilience and work ethic, all those things were going to be there. And, and they helped me begin my career strong from a nine to five standpoint. But there's this huge other part of our career that is equally important. And when you get it down, you really even become a better contributor in the workplace. And I believe it's that area of personal development. And those are the things I was trying to wrap my head around. Ultimately, all these things led me to starting Court to Corporate. It was a first it was a journal entry. Then it was an Instagram uh, page that I kind of shared my thoughts on from time to time. 
evolved into a podcast. And uh, really the goal of Court to Corporate was to tell the story differently for student athletes. I think what I learned through my personal journey was that I had to tell myself a different story in order to get the most out of my athletic experience. Instead of thinking that, wow, once I you know get to the other side, I have to start fresh. It's a new thing. It's you know completely new challenge. It's like, wow, I've actually been here before in so many ways. The process of you know growing my career as an athlete is the same thing as growing my career as as a marketer, as uh, you know someone in sports, as someone in venture capital, right? So reframing the story was the goal for Court to Corporate, not only for myself but also for the you know forty plus um, athletes that came on and were part of the platform and podcast over two years. Um, and so you know a lot of kind of building court to corporate, building my career um, has helped kind of inform and inspire uh, my career path in the sports industry so far. I'm currently at Will Ventures, um, director of marketing there, and we're an early stage venture capital firm investing in media, health and wellness, and consumer businesses. Um, and, you know, have really kind of tried to evolve the court to corporate message and just find new ways to share that with student athletes. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's rewind a little bit because when I when I first, I believe my first introduction to you it was on Instagram or something like we were talking about before we we don't know how it happened it just happened <laughs> <laughs> but um but Harvard like what what was what was that experience like because you know Harvard is the school that we always hear about in the movies and different things like that but you know you actually got to experience being on campus at Harvard like what <laughs> what, what was that like in addition to even being a hooper there at Harvard. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny as you say that. I, I definitely had that same uh, feel or uh, just kind of like, am I really about to go play basketball at Harvard? Like I never really thought about it for myself, <laughs> but it's really normal. Like I'll tell you that <laughs> it's really normal. Um, but I, I will say, I guess, something that would actually be helpful for, you know, people to hear is like how it got there. And um it was kind of a decision-making process that happened through sports that I think even informs my decision-making process today is, mm -hmm. you know, someone early on in my career. And it was, uh, you know, a torn ACL in my junior year of high school, didn't have basketball. It was an important recruiting season. And I was just like, damn, I'm like, it might be, I didn't think it was over, but it felt like it was over in that moment. But I do remember from that point on, I was like, I am only playing in a program that I believe I will be happy if I can't play basketball because I know how fragile it is. Like, you know, the game can be taken away from you at any moment. And it's not operating from a standpoint of fear, but it's operating from a standpoint of how can you develop yourself holistically and be a part of a program that val values you on the court as much as you do off the court. I think every program says that, but like only so many really have a, the culture and the mindset and the systems to implement it. Um, and I really felt the culture there as soon as I, I visited Harvard's campus. And um, that was really validated over my four years there, you know, being able to participate in those internships, being able to, you know, be a part of SAC and, um, you know, be a part of like student athlete CMO, which was like a new initiative by my senior year, like really felt that support from my coaches, from my mentors that were seniors when like I was a freshman to even how I tried to help freshmen when I was then a senior. So um, the experience at Harvard was was amazing and can only say positive things about it. Dope, dope. Yeah, dope. And I mean, I'm I'm not sure all of the listeners who are chiming in. I'm not sure if they've had a chance to grace your Instagram page. But <laughs> like I was telling you, because I, I was I was scrolling down and I was seeing the the Harvard photos, and then like I told you, I seen the photo with with you and John Wall. I seen the photo with DJ Khaled, <laughs> and I was like, wow, she was a marketer before she knew was a she before she knew she was a marketer. <laughs> because right. oh no no go ahead go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm actually curious to hear more about this. <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, like, as I was just look, looking at your just looking at your page and then I was looking at, you know, like looking at some of the um, God, what's it called when you put it on the post and you you. The oh, captions. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Your your captions. Oh, like, it can't be as obvious as captions, but it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, wait a minute, because, you know, with DJ Khaled and then you said that the piece about imagine how many times he said key. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> but 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 the thing I was just connecting is just 
one, you 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 live a very, very interesting life. Like your life, you make your life look so interesting. I'm like, <laughs> it, might, it must be really cool to be Kirby. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But I mean, honestly, it, it is funny. I mean, going back to the point of like, I was a marketer before I knew it was a marketer. Um, I do realize that now as I get more and more into the marketing Twitter hole, uh, and just, you know, follow all the, the thought leaders in the space and just, you know, storytelling is like increasingly one of the most important skill sets, not just I, regardless of what career path you're in, like marketing or not, like for your own personal career development and growth and acceleration. Like if you have a point of view on what your story is, you know how to communicate it effectively and you can implement a system um to deliver that message effectively and you know build community around it that's a really important skill set and when i started court to corporate or even you know maybe going back to my senior year when you saw <laughs> those uh those posts like you know i didn't really realize what i was doing um i didn't realize that with like court to corporate and i was like curating all this content like mm. i have backlogs and backlogs of content, right? Like I have all these posts of like Mav Carter and Magic Johnson and studying LeBron and studying Rudy Klein Thomas and studying, you know, Rich Kleiman and Kevin Durant, like studying, writing down all my thoughts. I was churning out content like consistently for a year, but I was just doing it because I was like, this is how I'm expressing like my passions right now. <laughs> like, mm. This is how I'm expressing like what I'm interested in. And it wasn't until I actually like got to the tail end of, of court to corporate that I realized like, wow, I actually built up a really important skill set through that. And I was like, I need to do this. I was building court to corporate for context through like the court to corporate brand. Like I had like a court to corporate website, court to corporate Instagram page, Twitter page. And during my time, like by association, I was kind of building up myself, right? Because like I was the host of my podcast, obviously. Mm -hmm. And like people knew that I was the person behind it. Um, but I did shy away a bit from like sharing my voice and sharing that like these are my ideas and like owning that like, hey, like I have this like grand vision to, you know, help student athletes think about business in a different way. And it wasn't until I got the to the tail end of court to corporate that I was like, wait, what if I applied all these things that I was doing to like build this platform to build up myself. Mm. And I, if I could go back, if there's someone listening to this right now, I mean, I think if you listen to a lot of, I, I listened to the Tim Ferriss podcast and it was like the future of like personal brands are like anonymous, basically. Like, as you think about like NFTs and everything, like everyone's going to move into this more like graphic, you know, pseudonym type of, um, you know, brand building versus like you being the face of it. But while we're in present day, if I could go back, I would have just built up court to corporate as myself. Like there wouldn't have even been a court to corporate. I would have just owned the message because at the end of the day, people really gravitate towards personal narratives and um, personal storylines and things that they can grab onto and see within themselves versus statistics or numbers or like platforms or like the what, like people want to know the why, like, why are you here telling me this story? And I really wish I would have learned that earlier on. So this got really off track because you <laughs> were asking about me being a marketer before I was a marketer, but it really just got me to thinking like, I kind of have had that knack to, you know, want to tell stories and, um, you know, just like spin things and like make it fun and like make it cool for people to engage with. Like even on on my Instagram now, like I remember one day, like I so I started like going hard on Twitter because I was like, okay, I'm getting my Twitter back. Like I had literally <laughs> I was on Twitter for a long time. I like went ghost on it for like seven years, and then I realized I was like, wait, I should really be tapping into Twitter. Like there's an opportunity here, so I started using a little bit more. And I was like, okay, like people kind of feel on my tweets a little bit. I was like, let me repurpose this. <laughs> I was like, let me repurpose this for Instagram. And I just like had this fun idea. I was like, let me just like, you know, throw like a, a cool basketball picture that I think like captures the message of, of this uh, point I'm trying to make. And I did one with like Dame Lillard, like confidence comes from like reps and sports and in life. It went crazy. I did it again for, um, you know, Andre Iguodala. It was like athletes investing yourself like you invest in your game because I think Andre Iguodala epitomizes that. Like the way mm -hmm. he built himself and his business outside of basketball, it's like he has two careers and like that's beautiful and that's like a message. But it's just like I was just doing those things for fun and I'm like, wow, 
this is like a content strategy that I can just lean into. So I think it's something I've learned over time is just like the, I think for personal brand building, I think my message has always been more authentic and people see the fun in it when I have fun with it. Right. And I don't take it too seriously. And I don't, you know, put this rigid structure in place. I, I leave that for, <laughs> for, um, for work. But I think with like personal brands, like, I think it's really important for people to always just like find the light and remember like why you're, why you're doing it. Cause it's your story. No one can tell it like you can. I definitely love that. I mean, I love, I love everything that you share, but I, I have to ask, because I, I feel like you didn't necessarily hit on this, but I but I personally want to hear selfishly. I want to hear. But but you said like as you were building up the court, the corporate brand, you said you shied away from like, you know, the the you in court, the corporate. Yeah. What, like what, what do you think it was that that held you back from from wanting to either share more about yourself or wanting to shine the light or what what, what was what, what was that piece? Yeah, I think, you know, it was. I started it like months after I had began my career and for, for context for people, like I wasn't, I had sports internships in undergrad, but I wasn't starting my career directly within sports. And so that was actually like another type of like layer to the court to corporate story. It was like, wow, like sports has been such a part of my life. I know I'm passionate about sports. I know that's where I want to be eventually, but I'm not, I'm not in it today. And like basketball has always been the backdrop of like, you know, me feeling like I'm close to it, but I actually, it's like, that's gone. I'm not working in the sports industry. Like, wow. Like that's, that's the question. What is my narrative? <laughs> because I know where I want to be and, and it's not really a part of my story today. And um, I do think the hesitance at the time was probably just around like me feeling like, oh, I'm too, I, I'm not able to speak on these things yet because I'm like maybe too young or like I don't have the experience or whatever it is. Um, so I think, you know, it, it's a little bit of that like uncomfort with putting yourself out there that I think a lot of us feel like wanting to kind of like hide behind a logo, hide behind a platform and be like, oh, it's not really it's that's court to corporate. That's not me. So if y'all don't like it, then like I can't take it personally. Right. Over time. I I learned to let that go, let that ish go. Because A, I learned that nobody, I mean, people care, but when I say nobody really cares, I mean, it's like, no one's really thinking about it as much as you are. So you might as well have fun with it and own it. Mm -hmm. uh, B, I learned that you don't have to be in a position. Once I saw the magic of Court to Corporate and what it did for my career and how it, how it accelerated uh, my trajectory in the sports industry, that's when I was like, oh no, I'm not, I'm not waiting to own my ideas anymore. Like that, that, if that wasn't a lesson, like implement it now. And it's like, I feel like I'm entering like phase two of like my personal brand. Basically, I think before it was court to corporate. Now it's kind of evolved message, more holistic, like not being pigeonholed into just one thing. But I think even with that, it's like, now it's like, if I believe I have like a unique perspective on something, I'm going to say it because you don't have to be at a certain level to have an opinion. You don't have to be doing the work like you like some advice I gave to someone who recently asked me, like, how should athletes like go about, um, you know, securing internships right now? And one of the things I said, I was like, you can create your own internship or your own work experience mm -hmm. and be intentional about it, right? Like before, if you wanted to work in the sports industry, you would probably go through the thought process of like, okay, I have to like send out like X applications to like these teams, these leagues, these sports brands. And if I don't get that, then I can't work in sports versus like now it's like, if you want to work in sports, okay, go for the big job. Great. If you get the big job, like I would even encourage you to still do this. If you don't get the big job, something you can focus on is like, how can I position myself to develop expertise, a point of view, learning network in the sports industry. And you don't need permission to do those things. Right. And so I think, you know, just like realizing that like, A, no one's, don't take yourself too seriously. Like it's all fun. And B, that you're only holding yourself back if you hold your ideas back. I think once I realized those two things, I just started to let the ideas fly, which is where I'm at today. 
That's some good game, Kirby. That's some good game. Yeah. Yeah. Things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so the the aspect of what you really just hit on about uh athletes are you know former athletes creating their own internship i think that certainly is the way to go and i never even thought about it like that until you put it like that mm -hmm. just because ultimately if you show somebody that you have the ability to create something then that's gonna it, when when they bring you in or if they decide to bring you on then they're they're gonna know that they have somebody who has the ability who yep. to be like a self-starter who has the ability to formulate something without necessarily getting permission to do it yeah and you know they, they have a they have an authentic leader yes exactly oh my goodness exactly like you literally like and even just like start like i, I know creating content isn't for everyone but to your point to add a layer to that the power of of doing that and also when I say like creating content, like let's not conflate the issue or like conflate what the goal is. Like for me, building court to corporate, even building my personal brand now, like the goal is not to be famous. <laughs> like that is not the goal. Like what's that J. Cole lyric? Are you doing this for fame or for personal growth? I don't, I would do that, but you know what I'm talking about. It's in the beginning of like the climb back. But anyways, I really love that quote because I think it's like, what are you doing this for and be real with yourself early on and decide what you're not doing it for because because i knew what i was not doing it for i wasn't doing it for like hundreds of thousands of followers i wasn't doing it for like clout i knew that it was building case studies of like my abilities of my strategic thinking by like doing the work over time like it was better than anything I could have been if I was like in the corner of my room, like, you know, fixating over my resume. Like I was out there doing the work and showing I could do the work. And that's sometimes more valuable than like, you know, being super, um, what's the word? It's like, you don't really have to, two ways. Okay, so it's like, you wanna, we kind of just walk through the scenario, but it's like, say like two people wanna get to like, the the same role one person like waits and waits and like they stay where they are and they like work on their resume and they like do all these things and they like think about it and they read about it but they never put anything out there and they just like hope that like it'll come to them and that when the time is right like they'll be like picked up from the gods yeah. other person is like okay bet like i'm still gonna do all the things the other person was doing but i'm gonna go out there and begin to show that i'm capable begin mm -hmm. to show that i think about these things begin to show that like i have that type of trajectory and you can do that through creating content. So the goal of content is really not to scale your followers, in my personal opinion. <laughs> I think it's you. <laughs> it's not. like, and, and I think if you do good work, that's going to come as a byproduct, right? Yeah. But I think the goal is really to build up case studies for yourself. And that's more, more powerful than anything else. Yeah, I think the goal of creating content is ultimately to... Well, one, one, you have to you have to identify the purpose for yourself, right? Because j just just like you said, some people can come out and one goal can be to establish a level of expertise or credibility. Somebody yeah. else can be, you know, wanting to build a, a brand, build a business so that hopefully somebody can buy it. Right. Or whatever it might be. Yeah. But I, I think at the end of the day, and th th this is my thought on it, you you curate content or you create content ultimately to serve and to nurture the people who you have the passion for, the people who you want to guide, the people who, you know, you want to help them get past whatever problem or struggle that that they're facing. And I think when you do that, then you start to get a different level of clarity. It's like, oh, wow, initially this was just going to be a blog. But yeah. now I'm saying these people need more support. So now this might be a, a book. This might yeah. be a podcast. This might be a program, you know, yeah. like just, just, just one of those things. But just like you said, I, I think we have to manage expectation yes. or, we have, or we have to just eliminate expectation at times. Yep. Because if if we go in and we say, all right, I'm just going to show up every day. <laughs> I'm going to be consistent every day. If this is at work, if this is with content or whatever it might be, and then we're going to get to the end result that we get to. But yeah. When we stop showing up and we're looking for this result to happen by the time we're 30, by the time yeah. I'm 32, I need to be married and I, 
I got off on a completely different tangent, but either way, <laughs> where, where are we going there? <laughs> either, either way, yeah. like either way, we have to focus in and really lock in on what the, what the end game goal is yes. and just serve the people. Yeah. Play the right games. Serve the people. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. We have to, we have to serve the people. And, <laughs> and, 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 and as, as we're talking about serving the people and as we're talking about, evolution Kirby it, it just comes to it you know you're you, you've been you've been doing some work right you've been doing some work and you're you're about you're about uh empowering empowering you know young leaders empowering the athletes the former athletes mm -hmm. Kirby talk to us talk to us <laughs> I think something I learned in the past two years is like the power of just letting your message evolve and that it doesn't, how you start is not how you have to finish. Finish, but like always start what you finished, but don't feel like you ever have to be like pigeonholed in what the first iteration of it was. For me, the first iteration was court to corporate. And I think because I was young and just like naive and just like, you know, guns blazing, I'm like, court to corporate is going to be like, you know, what takes you to the high road. <laughs> <laughs> you you already know how that goes. Like I'm like this, this, this. Like I'm just doing this, and that's it. Um, I it actually led me. It was like crazy. It was right when I actually did an interview with like Jeremy Darlow, who I he was like playbook, right? Like when I first graduated, like I read athletes or brands too. I would, I read brands win championships. I literally mm. studied his whole trajectory, career path, listened to all his interviews, listened to his podcast. Like he was a huge inspiration behind court to corporate. And it was crazy. I got him on my podcast uh, around probably this time last year. Uh, I got him on my podcast and it, it was crazy. It was like, it was what I always worked for with court to corporate. And I was like, this it was like one of it was the best performing podcast like i was like wow like this is like what i have like worked for mm. almost right it's like wow like literally studied got him on my platform he's huge like this like this is the podcast is about to take off and shortly after that i actually decided to close that chapter of court to corporate and i remember it was a really tough decision it was really really hard because sometimes you feel like you have to keep going on the one thing and that one thing has to be the one thing when in reality sometimes there's more power in like taking a step back and thinking about how can that foundation almost evolve mm. evolve into something bigger evolve into something better and it took me a while to figure out what that was um i wasn't sure really where to take it but i ended up like taking probably that entire summer off when, you know, the past two years or year and a half, I had been like pushing out content, like every week, you know, building, building my personal brand, like all this stuff. And like, you know, we're like mid COVID and there's just like <laughs> so much pressure around, like, like, I mean, there's always pressure for our generation to like, feel like you'll always have to be on. But mm -hmm. I remember it was like, wow, like got to like the peak of court to corporate. Like, it feels like there's a lot of pressure right now to like be going hard and like building my audience. And I'm like radio silence, but it was like in that time where I like locked in and like slowed down I came out stronger, like mm. 10 times stronger with a better, I think a better message, uh, <laughs> better branding almost. And um, just clarity that there are bigger things to shoot for. And that would not have happened if I had just been spinning the wheels, right? If I had just been doing the management of court to corporate and pushing out things because I felt like I had to, or creating three posts per week because I saw that was the best practice. Who said that? Like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like we really just follow silly rules sometimes. <laughs> and imagine if I had been devoting X hours per week towards that instead of X hours per week towards something that's bigger and better, you know, it's just like, sometimes you really have to like remove yourself from what you're doing to take a hard look and be real with yourself about how can these things grow. All that said, someone that's probably listening to this and doesn't follow me, they're probably like, girl, what is it? <laughs> like you're being like <laughs> mysterious. I just like wanted to share the the evolution because I think that's like important in terms mm -hmm. of how I got here. 
Um, you know, basically what I realized is that through my personal career journey and, you know, starting and candidly getting off to a really strong start in the sports industry, you know, year and a half in was recognized by Sports Business Journal 30 Under 30. Um, months after it was recognized by Front Office Sports Rising 25 um, through Court to Corporate had built such, you know, an extensive, I wouldn't even call it network, just community of, you know, like-minded people um, like yourself, right, that are like in the space, want to support athletes in business and had kind of created a flywheel around, um, you know, what I what I stood for and the opportunities that I attracted because I had done the work early on to think about like, what is what is that thing? Like, what do I want to be known for in this new game? How am I going to implement a plan to go achieve it, right? And I think bird's eye view, I saw themes emerge from my journey, from the 40, almost call it like, you know, interviews, like not, they I mean, sorry, <laughs> They were interviews, like case studies of other student athletes, current and former that um, had come on my podcast. And I was like, what is the message, right? Like, you know, because a podcast isn't linear. They're like two people can listen to it and come out with a completely different takeaway. Mm. But I'm able to see all these things together. Like, what are the themes? Like, what what is the like, what are the main takeaways that I want people to know from like following this type of narrative? And for me, it was that your career is just a new game. And I say that because I think a lot of what you see between like the difference between like high performers and mediocre performers is often mindset and how they they frame situations and how they attack opportunities and the systems they put in place. And I think a lot of career development for student athletes is really focused on the tactics. It's like, you know, you did these things in sports, it helps you do this project well it helps you do this and you're like nine to five well where it's like the real growth happens when you treat yourself almost like as a business and as like an entity and something that you're going to develop and bring this offensive approach to your life um and i believe that begins with mindset so this new message which is attack your career like your game is kind of a platform to help student athletes think about that business, whether it's starting your career or beginning beginning a business venture differently. Um, and it's starting with um, my, my first course or book or like whatever you want to call it that's coming out um, this summer, uh, where I walk through five strategies that athletes can leverage from their sport to drive growth in their career. It covers things like how to craft your, your personal narrative, which is very similar to figuring out, you know, what your, you know, unique position is in your sport, how to think about personal development, which is very similar to investing in and growing your game, how to think about getting in the game and starting with creating content, which is very similar to the strategies you implemented to add value to your team, building a network, like building a team, leadership in your own careers, very similar to being a captain, like you were in your sport, whether you're a captain or not, I think we all have that mindset. So it's really just a different way to think about, you know, what are these big, high level themes that I need to tackle in my career in order to start strong? And instead of feeling like I'm starting fresh and that I've never done this before and that career is so new to me because I've never had work experiences, right? Like that's such a challenge for us. It's like, wow, you know, if you actually look back and just think about the things that you've done in your sport already differently, you've been here before and you're much further ahead of the game than people that did not play sports, no shade though, <laughs> in getting started. Okay. So that is um, attack your career like your game. And it's been cool to, you know, like put that message out there. Cause I feel like I, I was like in the cut working on it for a minute. <laughs> like, people are like, yo Kirby, are you like still like, you know, posting like on Twitter? I'm like, yes, I'm here. I'm just like, you know, <laughs> figuring out what the message is, but now I'm back. And um, I really do feel like the message is stronger and I'm just excited for, you know, what's ahead and, you know, getting this out there and seeing the different ways that it can help student athletes at different stages of, of their career journey. Yeah, yeah. I think that with just what, what you what you really just shared is the aspect of well, what I took away, just like you're saying, things aren't linear. What I took away from what you just shared yeah. is just is understanding the fact of you've you've been here before, 
right? So you you've gone through you've gone through the the undergraduate school. You you've yeah. gone from court to corporate. You've gone through and you know accomplished these things, live living that that really cool life that I see on your Instagram feed. But but but, but the thing I really want to just highlight is that I think in in this time that that we're in now more than ever before why should you not if you have if you have the opportunity to take a shortcut to advance and fast track your experiences in life mm -hmm. why why would we not want to learn from somebody who's already been there why would we not want to you know yeah. take the time and, and check out the program or take the time and learn from somebody who who may have made some mistakes or you know who has been through certain areas that we don't necessarily have to go through so yeah. i'm just bringing that to the forefront because man I wish, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just wish I knew who Kirby Porter was when, when I was, you know, when, when I was coming out because Appreciate it, that. It, it was confusing. It, it, it was, was confusing. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I really, I really love what I love the new evolution of the platform. And I also was thinking about it. I'm like, well, this makes you look like a stronger marketer, even than you thought you were. And this is not me bigging you up, but listen, but listen, because, oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. like, cause it can be viewed as a marketing strategy that you disappeared. And then it's like, you're, you're creating this level of scarcity. They're like, where's Kirby? Where's Kirby? Where's Kirby? Where's Kirby? <laughs> so everybody's looking for you. <laughs> and then when you come out with a different message, it's like, Oh, Boom. She had it. That's where she was. Yeah. She okay. Yeah. She, she had us waiting for the oh, new Jays that just dropped. Yeah. Beyonce album just dropped in the middle of the night. Oh. I was on my Rihanna. <laughs> Rihanna ain't dropped an album in seven years. I was gone for seven months, but now I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Well, wow. Kirby, we're 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 gonna we're gonna have to wrap this up because I know I know you got to go. I know you're busy. I know you got to go. We 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 we're probably gonna have to have a have a follow up. Yeah. Have, have a follow up. But before we get ready to wrap it up, I have to I have to run you through the two minute drill. Okay. And and the two minute drill is just where I'm gonna ask you a few rapid fire questions and then we're gonna you know have a, have a little fun. Let people see just a, a different side and then from there you can let people know where to connect with you and also how they can get plugged in. So are awesome. you ready? Let's do it. All right. And here we go. Favorite food. Crap. I'm so terrible. <laughs> this is rapid fire. <laughs> oh, um, I love popcorn. Okay. Uh, what, what's the what's the last book you read? Um, oh my gosh, what is the last book I read? Oh, Atomic Habits. Mm. My name's clear. Yep, yep. Yeah. Most underrated cereal. Uh, definitely Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Like CTC. Wow. Okay, CTC. Wow. <laughs> What's your go-to streaming show of preference? The Last Dance. I have watched it a million times. And then Last Chance You Basketball. I'm about to watch that a million times. Fair enough. Next. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And then what's what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? You can take your time. Mm. Attack your career like your game. And I say that not to be corny, but it's really like you go from feeling like, here we go again, it's another week, it's another day, to like, let's get it like this is like my career is now like my sport it is an opportunity to demonstrate my talents to get better to reach my unique potential and whatever i determine i want to accomplish and i think when you view it that way you're you're ahead of 90 percent of the pack i promise you so it's just a new game that's my biggest piece of advice that's gold. That's gold. And then the bonus question, who's one guest that you would like to see me interview next on Beyond the Ball? Um, let me think. I would love to have a WNBA player on the show. Okay. Maybe Shanae Agumake. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Are you connected? You connected with her? Can you plug I had her on my podcast. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, if you can hook that up, hey, we'll make yep. it happen. We'll make it happen. Yep. But... All right. All right, Kirby. Now, please go ahead. Let people know where they can uh, where people can get connected with you, how they can follow you and yes. even how they can, you know, take take action and attack their career like their game. What? Um, OK, connect with me. Kerbo Bangs. Uh, can people see this here? Kerbo Bangs uh, on Twitter, uh, Instagram, 
Curb Reporter on LinkedIn, but I really like Twitter the most. Um, so take that as you will. Uh, CurbReporter.com for more information about Attack Your Career Like Your Game and some of my other works and projects that are coming up. And um, that's it. I, I hope this conversation was valuable. If you found it was valuable, please give me a shout. I'd love to hear. Boom. Yeah, there it is. There it is. You took my part. I was going to say, I always <laughs> say, if, you, if you're listening or if you're watching, you know, screenshot the episode and I say DM it to yep. Kirby or DM it to, to me and, and tag us. You know, let, let, let Kirby know what part was really beneficial, what part stuck out or what really impacted you through the process. Yep. Kirby, thank you. For, Thank uh, you. For being a guest. I appreciate it. I love your platform and keep keep building it out. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And to all the ballers out there, I want to encourage you all to make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. But even in addition to that, go follow Kirby. Go follow Kirby. The content that she puts out on Twitter, off the chain, the, the information that she shares on LinkedIn. Amazing. And then if you want to just see her extravagant lifestyle, follow her on Instagram as well. She shared her handles. But all right, ballers, uh, until next time, this is Jonathan Jones. And this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.